Shut off the looper, but I shut off the phone instead. Man, that was crazy stream of consciousness. Hello, friends. It's Uncle Larry, the Sagittarius from Cleveland. Tom Bukovac. Thomas Joseph Bukovac. From Lake County, Ohio. Product of the East Lake North school system. Public schools, my friends. Did I did I ever tell you about how I how I'm on the uh, East Lake North High School notable alumni list? Did I ever tell you about that? Um, some of the old friends from school still watch this show. Um, shout out to all of them. Um, Andy Prainer, my old keyboard player from uh, my first band. And I didn't make it up to the big Fairweather reunion the other night. I really wanted to go to that. God, I'll bet that was fun. I really wanted to go to that. So if any of you Fairweather guys are watching, I'm really bummed that I couldn't make that. But hello to you all. Formative years of my life playing in that band. Those that know, know. But anyway, hope everybody's great out in YouTube land. Um, been a, had a great weekend hanging with the boys. Man, we were having so much fun. We had baseball games, football games. We've been playing constant catch with mitts and footballs, baseballs. Leo went five for five yesterday in a trouncing 
his team whipped on the other team, 15 to four. He went five for five with four ribbies, four runs scored. The boy's a natural born hitter. He can he can hit the he can hit the cover off the ball. Eight years old, killing it. I'm so proud of him. Uh, even Marshall, my 11 year old, is watching him on the sidelines. He's like, yeah, Leo. It's great to see. Um, and then we've been playing lots of music. Uh, that go drum set has been a big hit around the house. Uh, man, these guys are really into that. And that's fun. Uh, a couple questions in the VCB here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I've been getting so many spam calls on my phone ever since I had to, when I, you know, I told you I'm trying to get this house and I had to, uh, I guess I had to get my credit pulled. You guys ever been through that? As soon as they pull your credit, you'll get a million spam calls from uh, bots all over the world trying to get some kind of, I don't even know what they're after. It's crazy. So don't ever get your credit pulled. Um, hey Tom, Pete Townsend or Pete Rose? Man. Oh Lord. That's tough. I can't pick. I can't pick. Pete Rose is a man after my own heart. Uh, Pete Townsend, my my second favorite guitar player of all time. I can't pick. All right, Townsend. That's a hard one, though. Um, let's see. Hey, Tom, what's the hardest thing you ever had to do as a musician? <laughs> you mean besides get through an entire session with Desmond Child or Cindy Lauper? Uh, let's see. Uh... The hardest thing I've ever had to do as a musician. Um, I'll tell you this. The early days of becoming a household name session guy are pretty tough. Um, you're, you know, when you're, when you're just young and you're just getting started. See, I've always said that being a session man is much like being a prostitute or a whore. And it's also kind of like being a tradesman. There's a combo of a whore and a tradesman. I used to have this, in the old days, I used to have this blog on uh, on MySpace where I talked about uh, the life, of, it's called The Session Man. That's where my name came from, Session Man. And um, it was comparing, you know, how similar a Session Man's job is to being a whore. Uh, you show up at the gig, you have no idea what the person who hired you or the John is into. So you have to quickly assess, okay, what's this guy into? What kind of kinky shit do I got to do today to get out of here with the money? Right. And when you're young, you don't have any, you don't have any like cred to, to back up. You got to do pretty, pretty much anything anybody asks you to, because you're just trying to get your foot in the door, you know? And it's also a bit of like a tradesman too. You show up at the job with your with your golf bag full of tools in the back of your van. You know you got you got your gear back there, and you come in to listen to what's going on. You say, "Okay, what do you guys need?" And they say, "Well, we're having this trouble with our bridge." Okay, uh, how long have you been having this trouble with your bridge? Well, since we wrote it. Okay, can I listen to it? And then they play it, and you go, "Oh, okay. I think I know what it takes to fix that bridge." Uh, how about some tremolo rakes and maybe a little baritone part to give it a scene change? Great, that sounds great. Let me go out to my gear, my car and get the gear and I come in and try to fix it for you. So it's all those things, you know. Um, but when you're young and you're a session man and you're young, you, I see I'm way more picky now that I'm old and, and you know, more of an established name. I, I would never do some of the things that I did back in those days. I mean, you got to stay late. You got to work for free, basically, at times. You, you know, they work you overtime, but they're not really going to pay you for that. They're just breaking you in, basically. Um, I used to work six, seven days a week before I had a family. And it was nonstop. I had to work on Sunday to make up for the stuff I couldn't do during the week. And it was insane. I would never do that now. I probably work two or three days a week now, and that's more than I can even handle. Um, so hats off to these young guys who who are willing to go through what I went through 
it's you can only do that for a short period of time before you burn out and um but you got to do it to get your foot in the door that's how you get known and i'm just, i'm assuming it's probably still that way even though i did it a long time ago you know so that's it you know it's kind of like a lot of other jobs out there you gotta you gotta eat shit for the first couple of years and do a bunch of stuff you would never do once you were more established in that job just to get your foot in the door. And then once you get in the foot, foot in the door, you can be like everybody else. Okay, I'm not working on Saturdays. I'm not working on Sundays. I'm not going to do a six o'clock session. I don't really like that drummer, so I'm not going to do the session. That kind of thing. You can say things like that. I'm way pickier now. And, you know, and, and that, you know, of course, obviously don't work as much because nobody wants to deal with a diva like me. You know, I'll, I'll say things like, can I hear the songs first? Before I just before I want to do a session, I would never do something like that in the old days. But whatever, I'm, you know, you can do that when you're old. I mean, I paid my dues, as they say. Okay, here's a couple more VCBs. Hey Tom, Sometimes is this just hard to carry on in the face of all the negativity you get on your YouTube channel? Oh Lord, yes, it is. Um, like for example, I put up a a video two days ago about a toy drum set for a ch for charity or for, for, for school programs and half the comments were negative. So what does that say? Um, a young dude I know was texting me last night and saying, man, he can't believe how much negativity he's getting on his channel. And I feel like a lot of it's really not anyone's fault. It's, this is a very hard time in the world right now. There's a lot of people that are very unhappy. And they're not getting where they want to go. So they're lashing out like fifth graders because they're so frustrated. And I understand. It's dark times in the world right now and for a lot of people, man. And um, when you're miserable like that and your life is not going well, of course you're going to say dick things about a toy drum set on a YouTube channel. I get it. So I, that's what I told the dude, the kid. I said, I said, man, just these people are miserable. Like he said, like, I said, like, like you show a lot of times you should like, he'll show off a, a cool guitar. He just got an old guitar and, and, and he says he's getting a lot of negative feedback from that. And I'm like, I'm like, well, dude, People are so unhappy, they would rather see that guitar get destroyed than for you to just show it off and talk about how cool it is. I mean, that's how dark some of these people are, you know? I mean, of course there's always the great people out there who are truly are happy to see other people do well in life. But that is, you know, that's, that's about 50-50 at this point. And um, I just try to focus on the positive at this point. I used to take those those insult comments a little more personally. Uh, the other day, the, the, whatever, whoever the jack off that runs the, the moderation on the gear pages, I would like to personally have a nice little hang with that guy and have, have a little chat with him. Uh, uh, some sweetheart guy started a thread on the gear page where he was trying to ask some honest opinions about that Gibson Les Paul shootout I did where I had three Les Pauls with PAS. A very innocuous, sweet thread. The guy is a very nice guy. And he, he was just trying to get a conversation going about pickups. And within the first page, it gets dumbed down to the gear page IQ thing. And it's, it's full of personal attacks. Everybody's talking about shit like my hair and stuff. And talking about how I handled uh, the response to the guy who asked me not to drink on my channel. And the guy's just trying to talk about PAFs, and this is what it turns into. I mean, these people are so dark and full of hatred. It's just, and then most people, most people will just let people pile on them and beat them up. See, I don't do that. I fired back, I said a couple things, and sure enough, the fucking guy moderates the gear page, blocks me, okay? The guy who's, poor guy who's trying to defend himself from getting pinata by 
the entire gear page and he blocks me. Um, it's just amazing, man. It's just amazing. I, I don't even know why I look at gear page. It is such a car crash. I mean, these people have never done anything in their life musically and they're acting like they're experts about music. It's just hilarious to me. Oh my God. And there are some nice folks on there. I'm not going to, I'm not saying it's a total loss, but it's damn near a total loss. Uh, but man, I mean, they get off topic so quick. Any opportunity they can to bash somebody, they're going to take it. My God, I feel sorry for guys like Joe Bonamassa and John Mayer and all those guys who are commonly targeted by these people, you know. Mm. Man, it's, it's pitiful. But I just chalk it up to just the darkness in the world in general. I mean, if people were happier and the world was in a better place and there wasn't so much social media and there wasn't so much plastic in the ocean and there wasn't so much strangulation of technology and political madness and and uh, and all this triggering and horseshit. Uh, people wouldn't be so miserable. Um, so I just kind of let it go for that. I mean, I mean that's really all you can do. I mean, of course people are unhappy. I'm unhappy. So. Let's just try to uh, pull ourselves up by the old bootstraps, as they say in the old military movies. And uh, man, let's just try to love your brother, folks. I, I'm making free videos for you guys. Keep that in mind. Free videos. Uh, I'm getting nothing out of this. I'm making free videos. I get occasional tip jar thing. These people think I'm getting rich off of this show. It's not like that, people. Uh, I, I am just going to try to focus on the good ones out there, the good people. And there's plenty of you guys. I don't, I don't need you all to make a million comments. Ignore the haters, Larry. I know. I know. You don't have to say that. Ignore the trolls. That's all they want is your attention. I've heard that a million times. I get it. I get it. But, man, it... It's just the darkness, the overarching darkness is what concerns me about the world, really. So it's a beautiful day out there today, like really beautiful. So I drove the convertible to school today with the boys. That's always fun. So things like that are a step in the right direction, okay? And uh, the way this guitar plays is a step in the right direction. It plays like butter. So anything else here in the old VCB pile? Um... Uh, oh, you know what else, too? Uh, I actually wrote this down because it's, it's, it's the, the thing that's really funny to me. is uh, the, I've noticed after four years of, of, of YouTubing that it's the, the people who say the, the, the most fucked up shit are always the ones who have zero content on their channel. Always. Without fail. No one who actually has any videos of their own on their channel is ever going to say something fucked up. Uh, anytime somebody says something really, really stupid, it's always a, a no content guy. Just, just watch that. You'll see. I, I swear to God, it's amazing. Um, but you know, you got guys like Teddy Boy and all these people who are just, he's just so completely lost. And they just can't stop spewing this negativity. And uh, you can't help somebody like that. I tried to help Teddy Boy in the early days. But he's just so far gone. Um, but anyway, I don't want to leave this on a dark note, so I'm going to play a burning fast lick. Ready? with four eight-inch speakers. 
absolutely love this amp. Don't go buy one. Please. They're not worth it. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, kids. Have a great day.